what's going on everybody welcome back to the channel welcome back to another youtube video today i want to show you guys how to onboard your synchrobit hotspot onto the crank network there is a little bit more work than the previous devices which are just raspberry pi based this actually has a compute module for so you need to buy this hardware which i will have linked in the description below and i will walk you through all the steps to get this device onboarded from the hardware all the way to the software so like i said pick up this device in the description below this is basically a raspberry pi board without the compute module so you can pick this up i think i got this for under 30 bucks and it comes and it looks like this so it's got USB C, which we will be using to connect this device to the computer as well as all the other ports so in the end game if you just want to actually use this cm4 board for something else you can pop it on here and basically have a full working raspberry pi with all of these pinouts and everything else you would see on a normal raspberry pi 4. So with that out of the way, now we're going to work on taking this device apart and pulling out the board that we need for this CM4 base. So first thing you gotta do is take off these four little rubber feet and set them to the side. And now we are working with a Phillips screw. All right, and now we are opened up. These screws are falling out. And you can see this RPSMA connector. You can just pull that off. That just connects right there on this little LoRa breakout board. So... This is what we got when we're looking on the inside of this device. There's not much going on here. It's pretty straightforward. This, there's the last screw. Okay. First thing you want to do is take these LEDs out. And if this is too complicated for you, just take a picture of how it looks now. So when you go back to reassemble it, you have a good idea of what it's supposed to look like. But you don't really have to actually unplug this. You just got to move it out of the way. We have to lift this board up. And to lift it up, it's held in by a couple clips. You can see on the left and the right, just wanna push those clips back and you should be able to pry this device out of the case. There we go, just like that. And there's this little plastic bezel diffuser. So we have to take these four screws off to get this heat sink off and then we can remove it from the device. It's four screws, pretty easy. Again, another set of Phillips screws Cool, with all the screws out, this heat sink can now come off and it's got some thermal paste. So if you wanna clean this up, you can. You really don't need to, we can just reuse it. You just don't wanna get this stuff on your hands. It's kinda nasty and it gets everywhere. It's like glitter. You guys have had experiences with glitter. So important thing to note when you're taking this off, there are four standoffs and when you pull this board off, they will fall off. So just keep in mind, in order to take this off, you want to pry kind of from both sides. Use your fingernails if you have them and just pry up on the device slowly. You are taking it off with four connectors there. The bottom one came off and just like that. So you can see these little standoffs fell off and only two of them. I can move over to this device. So this is the Raspberry Pi compute module. This is the brains of a Raspberry Pi and it fits perfectly onto this device. You can see here, it actually lines up in only one orientation. So you're not going to get this confused. You can see that these pins are positioned on this side more so than this side. So if I were to put it on this way, it just wouldn't line up. So it's pretty easy to get this attached. You just want to make sure you line the, the board up with the holes. And then you can push this into place. And let's do that real quick and it will kind of snap into place like that. And now this device is ready. Now we're gonna hop over to the computer and I'll show you guys the steps from there to get this all set up. All right, so now heading over to the computer, you guys wanna make sure you navigate to the link in the description, crank.io slash downloads to download the latest crank image, which as of right now is 7-10-2023. Once you download that image, then we can move forward with these steps. So then you want to download Belena Etcher and we can move forward from here. So I already went over these steps, which was unboxing the device and unplugging everything, getting the device off, prying this board off. And now we're at the steps right here where you want to connect the device to the computer via a USB-C to USB-A port. Uh, the USB-A for those that are confused is just your standard USB and USB-C is the new USB connections that they have been putting out in the world lately. So. Download and install the RPI boot tool. If you guys are using this tutorial PDF, when you hover over this, it gives you a link so you can download it. I actually already have this downloaded, so I'm gonna open it right here. 
and a pop-up comes up. I'm going to plug in my device now. Click Next, click Agree, click Next, click Install. Let it all install all this information. And my device, when you plug it in, it has three lights. So that's cool. And if you go back here, you can see there is a little switch right here that says off and on. You want to make sure you have it checked to on. So for me, it's still not working. I'm going to search for the RPI boot file, which is right here. I'm going to open it. You just heard the connection. It keeps disconnecting and reconnecting. It's detected on my computer now. It might show up here. Cool. So now it's showing up here. I only have eight gigabytes of storage. I'm going to close out of this and now let's click select target because it looks like it's showing up and click flash. And the crank image is 3.7 gigabytes. The compute module is seven gigabytes. So I'm just going to let this go through its process and then we can put this device all back together and set it up on the crank dashboard. So the next step is heading over to the local dashboard and in order to find out how to get here you need the IP address for your specific device. In the tutorial it tells you to use advanced IP scanner which I will put in the description for you guys if you want to download that and you can figure out the IP address and then you put the colon 17080 and to log in the username is admin and the password is the last six digits of your MAC address and all the information can be provided to you in your router settings or if you use the advanced IP scanner. So now that we are on the dashboard, the first thing you want to do is go through the gateway setup. And in our case, it's a synchro bit and my region is US 915. The gateway ID should be auto filled and you need to turn on packet forwarder. So that's checked and I'm going to click save. So after this saved, you want to copy this gateway ID and then we can head over to the crank dashboard and you can already see I have my synchro bit set up here. I have my public key. I have the assign button. And an important thing to note is you need to have a balance of KDA in order to make sure this goes through because you need to pay for gas fees as well as a crank balance. And this balance will differ depending on when you decide to onboard your synchro bit. So now I'm going to click assign and it's pretty much the same steps. You want to scroll down and find synchro bit and paste this gateway ID that we just copied. So I'm going to click submit and the transaction was sent successfully. Now we can go back to the local dashboard and finish the final setup, which is importing your secret phrase. That way the crank dashboard and your wallet here can communicate with your device here. So you need to import the secret key from this wallet. And if you have it written down, great. If you don't have it written down, please write it down somewhere. It's important that you do that. But you can also reveal the secret key by going into your dashboard and clicking on that. So I'm going to do that. And I just pasted my private key here and you can see it pulls up this wallet address. Make sure it matches with the wallet address on the crank dashboard. So after about five minutes, my gateway finally showed up with a name so I can click on it. I'm sneaky yellow copperhead and you can see there's nothing going on here. You need to head over to proof of trust and scroll down and you can see the current price to participate is 790 crank so I'm going to click on participate and click yes and now this is going to take one to two minutes to settle on the blockchain the final step and this is if you have your synchro bit already working on helium in my case I didn't even onboard it to helium because there's really no onboarding process if you are an existing user and you still want to participate with helium you can dual mine by going to this helium tab right here and clicking on install but I'm not going to do that because I don't want helium on my device so that's it for the tutorial let me know if you guys have any questions any comments any concerns um, put them in the comment section below and I will do my best to answer it, as well as join my discord server and the cranks discord server so we can discuss crank and other crypto projects thank you so much for watching peace out